15 commercial fishermen. These are tough guys. 12 hours are just as hard as we could go. An unknown number of destructive fish. There's 10 times more of them than I thought there was. At first, these fish were a novelty. Then it became scary. Then it became alarming. How many can they catch in two days? Never seen a boat with 6,000 pounds of fish in it. An unusual fishing tournament. And this is the first ever commercial fishing tournament anywhere for anything. There's something else at stake. $20,000 in prize money. We're gonna try to take first place. We sure are. Well, I don't like to finish second. <laughs> <laughs> this is Carp Madness. The world's going to be watching. Bringing attention to an invading force known as the Asian carp. Now people suddenly realize, wait a minute, this is a bigger issue than we ever thought it could be. They were uh, used down south in Arkansas. They were brought in originally and to keep clean up the water in culture ponds such as catfish and uh, water treatment plants, and through flooding and escapement through other routes, they ended up in the rivers, the big rivers down that way, and have worked their way all the way up to Kentucky, all the way up through Illinois, Great Lakes, and the northern states are panicked. Everybody's worried about these fish. They're moving quickly. Although there are five species of Asian carp, Kentucky is primarily battling two, the big head and the silver carp. All right, it's the night before the big Asian carp roundup tournament, the first ever here at Kentucky Dam Village is where we're shooting out of. They're having a meeting here at the Village Green in the meeting room. They've got everybody together from all over. This tournament is allowing us a mechanism to remove Asian carp. I've been touting how a uh, commercial fisherman can catch anything and catch it out if they want and I'm expecting that kind of effort from you guys now because the world's gonna be watching you. Give it your all. Uh, and just for a heads up, we do have officers who may or may not be in uniform. Six o'clock in the morning, they gotta go out. Near freezing temperatures, but that's nothing for these commercial fishermen. We gotta put up with a lot of weather conditions, go when a lot of people don't wanna go or can't go. They gotta be back at their ramp by seven o'clock at night. As the sun rises on the cool waters of Kentucky and Barkley Lakes, the contestants of the first ever Carp Madness set forth to cast their nets. Barkley and Kentucky Lakes, home to boaters, anglers, and a way of life. You love this. Oh, no doubt. You wouldn't be out here every day, freezing, burning up, Whatever. Yeah. And then weather can change down here in, in just an instant. In an instant, yeah. I love it. I feel blessed to be able to do it and feel blessed to be able to do it with my family. Well, I was in the backwater going to dip, going fishing. We got in a power line. Now, what's the name of your business, Eddie? Hands Free Fishing. Hands Free Fishing. That's, <laughs> that is appropriate. And it's our, our two biggest fisheries within the state as far as people coming in to fish. They cover tens of thousands of acres, so they had a lot of water to fish. I'm originally from Nashville, uh, and I fished these lakes as a kid. We didn't have this problem 25, 30, 40 years ago. We got to have somebody that's going to sit in nets that's going to catch 8, 10, 12, 15,000 pounds a day. Never know. It's fishing, and you know, you may go out and really stomp them, and you might go out and think, well, where'd they all go? You just never know. By noon, no boats, no fish, leaving some to wonder. Yeah, it was a long wait since 5 o'clock this morning. You know, the conditions were cold and windy. It's uh, putting a lot of pressure on the lines, a few fish is getting out of the nets. That's a big old... oh. It's causing some issues, cold hands. And... and it got towards noon and we hadn't seen any fish. Typically, they'll set their nets, let them soak for a couple hours, and then run back in. So. Uh, some of the guys that know what they're doing out there said it'd be about noon before they started coming in.
By mid-afternoon, the first boat finally arrives for weigh-in. Uh, that's exciting. I figured there were going to be more boats here already, but yeah, it's real exciting. A little work, you'll find them. We ran, what, four or five nets, and finally yeah. we caught one that had probably 700 pounds in it just in one net. The first load was a good start for first place. That feel good. And so hopefully they'll keep coming in, we'll keep getting, adding the pounds and get rid of these things. Let's head out to the water. As an observer, is your job, what do you do down here? I'm recording what nets they're putting out, how long the net is, what the mesh size is, which is the square of the, of the individual nets, um, how many they're putting out, what time they go out, and then when they start taking them up in a little bit, then I'll start recording any game fish that are caught, what, what the, whether the game fish were alive or dead when they release them, so we can make sure that what we're doing here is not hurting the, 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 you know, the fishery worse than, than helping it by getting the carp out. Lunch times go forgotten. The only reprieve is moving to the next net. Now let's see how they're doing back at weigh-in. That's a daily thing for us. Well, he got them crammed in there. First place kept changing. Dennis Duncan of Dover, Tennessee, showed us the first big load of the day. That's not even full-time fisherman. That's, that's a college professor and a, a grad student at Vanderbilt right there. Oh, the big boys ain't got here yet. I've heard rumors that there's one guy out there that has 5,000 pounds that coming in, so hopefully that's true. Some drove almost 200 miles just to catch a glimpse. We just thought it'd be a learning experience for the kids and brought them out. And my dad fishes down here on Kentucky Lake, so it's important to us to get these fish out of here and kind of raise awareness and that kind of thing. So it was, it was interesting to us. The big boys ain't got here yet. Until Team Fraley pulled up. Well, we had a pretty good day. That bay we were in is just absolutely covered with them. Part of us from Tennessee and part of us from Kentucky, so we get along all right. <laughs> These huge containers that many call totes, they're not your average tote for laundry. To this fishing tournament and to this crowd, watching the scale alone became a spectator sport. As of right now, we've had five people weigh in. Total on silver and big head is about 10,000. A drop in the bucket to the number out there, but it is a start. And there's another ton that won't be competing with our native fish. And some of the contestants? I guess me, Eddie Hook. For having tackle issues. Okay, you're not happy with this, but that one guy came in with one fish. It's fishing. That's fishing. That's fishing. I mean, I mean, you had a pile of fish. Some more people came in, they had a little bit more fish, but this may only makes you more determined to do what? Well, I got to go home and get my tackle together and get you ready. You got to switch some stuff up, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. That's, part, that's the best thing about being a commercial fisherman. It's on your shoulders if you win or lose. And you can't blame thing, nobody if one else. Thing changes, you gotta you change just got to go back and change. I think as the day goes on, and even tomorrow, they're going to find where these fish are and I expect that the total weights are gonna go up as time goes on. Many lessons were learned on the first day and strategies would no doubt change tomorrow. Towards the end of the day, Barry Mann came in with some substantial weight. Barry Mann, we've been sitting around here waiting for you. Somebody said you had a boat full of fish and they weren't lying. Look like, look like it happened. Is it technique? Is it equipment or is it location? It's equipment and location. Equipment and location. Mm -hmm. So you get another day yet. So you're not telling anybody where you were. I don't Well, they can have where we've been. We're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you afraid you bust them up just a bit? Just a little bit. The day ended with darkness, just as it began. And we knew it was gonna be a neck and neck tournament. 
Team Fraley nervously watches on. Just at the end of the day, Heath Fraley, one of the other commercial fishermen, came in. Fraley number one, about 10,700 pounds right now. 9,433 pounds, second place, man. Oh yeah, just, I mean, just ride around until you see them jump and put your nets out there and hope for the best, you know, I mean, they're, they're everywhere, it ain't, it ain't a, uh, I mean, it's, it's not hard to, not hard to catch them, as many as it is. It's all in a day's work. Meet the commercial fishermen. I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a learning experience for everybody. Uh, I heard about it. My buddy's a commercial fisherman up in northern Kentucky uh, invited me to go along. I thought it would be a pretty neat learning experience and uh, try to put a dent in the population these days. This isn't a men's only profession. Why, yes. Just the concept of a commercial fishing tournament itself, is that kind of bizarre to you? Right? Yeah, I think it's exciting. I mean, which, you know, out there fishing with family, and, and this species is really, really getting thick. Since you've had them in great numbers a little longer, you think you might have a, a little bit of a head start on these guys? I don't really know. I, I don't know how Kentucky guys fish. By day two, only 12 were left to continue. I'm team man. And he's unloaded the biggest catch of day two. The more than 1,200 pound lead for Team Freely has vanished. It seems the catch of the day is about 45 minutes from the way station. It's been a blast. On the very rough and frigid Lake Barkley is where we find Barry Mann. We basically set us a goal. We wanted to catch 20,000 pounds in two days. Some people had an idea that they were in there. I think when you see a boat full, that really stuck with a lot of people and realized, wow, there's a lot more fish in here than I realized. Well, I've lived here a lifetime, and uh, I'm 40, 68 years old, so I've done a lot of fishing on the lake, spent a lot of time up there. I can tell every year there's more and more of them on the lakes. Just how bad is it? If you fish down here a lot and you spend time down here, if you go below the dams and you look at the numbers, of these things, it's scary. There's millions of pounds in here. I fish out here on these drops in the summertime and, and they'll come up on top and it's nothing but solid carp from this long to long, from, to five feet long. Asian carp, without a doubt, are probably the most prominent invasive species to, to come on the, the scene for sportsmen. As far as I could see was big head carp, about that far into the water and I was winding that spinnerbait in them. And I mean, there was millions of them anywhere from probably seven to 30 pounds. And you know, I never caught a bass there last year. Not one. I mean, it's amazing when we think about how many fish are out there in the water on the depth finder, I assume everything I see out there is a bass or a crappie. Mm. And to know what I saw today, to know that hundreds of pounds of Asian carp are in a small little bay on Kentucky Lake, on Barkley Lake, I find it amazing. Simply put, they are eating machines. They compete with all fish species at some point in their life. They feed on the same food items that uh, most young larval fish feed on, especially sport fish, and that becomes a big problem. Big head carp can reach up to 100 pounds and consume up to 140% of their body weight daily while they're young. And as adults, they can gobble up 20 to 40% of their weight each day. The Asian carp reproduce at such high rates well, they're breeding by the millions. Based on you know everything that we've read about and heard about, and um, if we don't do something about it, it's it's going to affect affect our, a lot of people's livelihoods. I, I was always worried about pollution, maybe being the demise to commercial fishing, but it's not. This right here is the biggest threat to Kentucky Lake. How has this in Illinois? How have these fish affected the old? way of doing things. Oh, it's it's pretty well wiped the buffalo population out of where they use, you know, no. where we used to catch a lot of buffalo, there's no buffalo. They're as concerned as anybody else is about this because it's their livelihood too. If these things affect the paddlefish uh, populations or the or the buffalo populations, which are direct competition for uh, forage with the Asian carp, it's going to hurt their livelihood. The fishery is going to is going to suffer from it if if 
we can't find a market for them where people will fish for them. A commercial fisherman will fish for them if they can sell them. Now what's important for the commercial fishermen is they have to be able to make a living out of this. It can be expensive. I mean, some days you're, you might be out $10 and some days you might be out $1,000. We got $5,000 worth of nets right now. <laughs> None of us would be out here doing this for nothing. In order for it to be successful for the sportsmen, for the habitat, and for the resource of, of game fisheries, uh, there's got to be an economic reward for that commercial fisherman. I've uh, fed legislators from Washington, D.C. to Kentucky on these things, and everybody loves these fish. The solution to that problem, truly, is to have a commercial fishery. There should be a market established for these fish. It's some of the best meat, and I'm not kidding you, some of the best meat I've ever eaten in my life. The beauty about this fish is that because it is got a very mild taste and is very uh, clean, you can adapt in multiple recipes. We are not here to eradicate this fish by cooking it. But I can tell you, the demand of fish today is huge. The markets are there for these fish, the fishermen can catch them. But this tournament is gonna to make a lot, go a long way to how fast that industry advances. Because what, one of the things people are hesitating on is A, are there enough fish out there? You guys know there's enough Asian carp out there. But B, can you catch them? Are you willing to go after them if the market's there? But what we're going to answer in the next two days is how effective are you at catching these things in places where we know there's a lot of them. Yeah, I believe all you guys can do the job. These are hard-working people right here. This is actually what I do. They get out there and they pull nets. Hand over hand, net after net. That's where I'm headed now, back to get another load. It's probably the hardest, most unforgiving job there is. Welcome to their office. It's kind of addicting. It's you have to get into it. It's kind of hard to get out of it. You know, we put everything we've got into it, so uh, uh, we're not going. We're not going to give up. We're going to go from time it starts to time it ends, daylight to dark. When you see a boat full of 7,000 pounds of fish up to the top gunnels on the boat, that really stuck with a lot of people and realized, wow, there's a lot more fish in here than I realized. I think it's a good deal to let the public know just how many, how many of them things there is in the lakes and the rivers. They're, they're up the old high, Green River, Pond River. Uh, they're, uh, they're a problem and gonna get to be a bigger problem. Yes, I was tournament director at Bass for um, couple years. I worked in the Federation for several years as the president of the Federation putting on several events, uh, bass tournaments. I've done a lot of tournaments. I've never seen a boat with, you know, 6,000 pounds of fish in it. A new reputation is forming about these rugged commercial fishermen. Ten years ago, the commercial fisherman was, you know, kind of the scum, the low man on the totem pole, but uh, I think, uh, you know, in another ten years, that, that they're going to be the high man, you know. Their stock is going up. Could commercial fishing save our waterways? I hope that it brings uh, sport fishermen uh, more aware where they can kind of understand the commercial fishing aspect. Uh, maybe maybe that we, they'll learn maybe that we are needed on this lake more so now than ever. A net of hope. And maybe these guys could save the day. These could be the guys in the white hats who are riding in on the, on the big white stallion and saving the day. We spoke with some of the, the Tennessee folks in, in their Fish and Wildlife Agency, and they, have, uh, they wanted to see how this tournament went because they're really interested in trying to do something similar. Um, they've got the same problems, and we're the first to do this. They wanted to see what worked and what didn't work, and I think they got a good idea. I will go back and I'll tell everyone that if this continues on, they need to get down here because I'm learning so much about the species. I'm learning so much about how much it affects everything around us and how it could come up to New Hampshire, and we don't want that. We don't want it in New Hampshire. We don't want it in Maine. Meanwhile, back at Way In. Still, no sign of Heath Fraley's team. With a top prize of $10,000, there isn't a moment to waste. They load the boat to the max before running to the shore to offload to a teammate who will then drive the catch to the weigh station. 
you're back. You got fish guts on you. Yes. I can tell you've been working. Yes. Now, yesterday, eh, 147 pounds. Today, 7,146. Oh, okay. Now, let's, now, wait a minute. 7,641. 7, what happened today that didn't happen yesterday? Well, we got a little hot tip and we found the fish. Ah, That's what it was. A hot tip. How much you See, pay? I didn't pay nothing. I know. <laughs> These guys are hustling, yeah. They've been at it. Well, we lost our boat at uh, quarter to six this morning. And they've been at it since then. They haven't stopped putting his nets out. Um, he's trying to cover the entire embayment. Kind of cut it off. He's getting in behind it and running his boat, stirring the fish up. And they're, they're running into his net. And he's doing well with it. And they fished. And they fished. And they fished. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I mean, I always, I like to see a boat full, another boat full come in. It's what I've taken on. It's, I went to college for a few years and still working on a degree, but just helping the family out and enjoying what I'm doing. It's being out, outside all the time, it's, uh, it's nice to have something different, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We're enjoying it, but uh, it's not something you see every day. This is Carp Madness. And by day's end, the lines grew. But day two was a different story, with Team Man the men to beat. As Heath Fraley's team unloaded for the last time, would it be enough? Yeah, I think we got you know close to 10,000 pounds today, and I mean it's a it's a big day. So, I mean, if any anybody goes out there and, and pulls for 13 hours two days in a row and catches 20,000 pounds of fish, that's, that means it's a lot of fish in the lake. Team Fraley has weighed in. Yeah, this is Barry Man. He has two boats coming in, and this is a. Last of the uh, weigh-in for tonight. My son, uh, he liked to fish, and he, cause he, that's all he did was when I was when he was a child growing up. And uh, I was wanting to go to college, but he got to doing so good fishing, I couldn't entice him to do it. But so he's 51 years old now and been fishing ever since he got out of high school. So I really want to thank you all for coming out to the very first ever Asian Carp Commercial Fishing Tournament. I walked up and I said, there's a fellow up there that said, come and find somebody and ask for a fish. Uh, what I'm going to do is take it home and a neighbor of mine will smoke it and then we'll taste it and we'll share it with all our neighbors. It doesn't look like it, but it's a beautiful fish. I don't remember wanting anything as bad as I want this fish. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the trunk of the car. Commercial fishermen can overfish anything they're allowed to overfish. And for a little bit of incentive, uh, they can do just that in these two reservoirs. Heath Fraley. While Heath Fraley's team tipped the scale at just over 22,000 pounds, it wasn't enough to tip the scales in their favor. Now, what was your secret? Oh, no. no Come on. Just, uh, just wide open all day. In the end, Barry Mann, last chance. 28,669 pounds. Is it technique, location, or a combination of both? A lot of hard work, right? There. <laughs> well, I, that's obvious. Uh, we had to change around today what we done yesterday. Yesterday, you seemed like we was just a little behind, and today we got a pattern, and it was good all day long. We had one little missed lick, but we was in them all day long today. Give one more hand, folks. Congratulations. Now, I worried all week, all month, trying to put, when we started putting this stuff together, worried about all the things that could go wrong. And believe me, it's been so smooth that everybody in the division should be congratulated for putting this thing together. And it, it's been amazing. I'm glad I was part of it. Fisheries Director Ron Brooks came up with this a very creative idea that's drawn a great deal of attention to it and hopefully can become a model for other states to start taking action. It's something that Kentucky can't do just on their own and sportsmen can't do just on their own. I think people have seen and are aware and they've seen little news clips of fish jumping out of the water and they don't really, a lot of people don't realize that's Kentucky. They think it might be somebody else's problem and they don't really know the long-term effects. When they see these pictures of thousands and thousands, 83,000 pounds of fish in two days, then I think they're really going to realize, hey, we got a problem here. Carp Madness 1, at least, is now in the history books. But the problem 
is still ever present. If we've learned anything from the 40 tons collected in the past two days, is that it's only a start, and that Asian carp, fisheries managers, the commercial fishing industry, and the future of bass, bluegill, crappie, and all of our native fish are very much all in the same boat. <laughs>